Hi, I'm Jeff Kubiak with Metchem. I'd like to introduce to you the Metchem mobile filter press system. This filter press is used in the oil and gas industry. It's transported from site to site. It'll stay at a site for a few months at a time. When it's time to transport, the catwalks fold down so it becomes a legal load. The hand railings come off, the supports come off. It's equipped with a conveyor belt system to dump the sludge off the back into our sludge dumpsters which are stowed temporarily on the front until we're at location. Once we're at location they come off and they go in the back. Filter press has a hydraulic system in the front, plate shifter controls on a retractable hose reel, and a pumping system. This is a used reconditioned 1200 millimeter plate and frame filter press. We offer new filter presses with recessed plates in various sizes up to 1500 millimeters down to 470 millimeter. This is the main control panel for the hydraulic system of the filter press on the trailer. There are several e-stops on the system. If something's not working as expected, check all of the e-stops to make sure they're out so you can operate the control panel. You'll notice that there's a system power switch. We're going to start with that. And then we're going to close the filter press uh, with this switch. This will uh, run the hydraulic ram forward or out. Right now we're closing the ram. The cylinder is extending, compressing all of the plates. When it gets up to pressure, it'll shut off. The final set point is adjustable. If you find the plates are leaking, there's an adjustment point on this servo here. When the filter press is full and you need to open the plates, simply switch the selector switch here from closed to open, passing through the off position. If there's a momentary delay, then the hydraulic kicks in and retracts the hydraulic ram. This is a long process, but once the ram is fully retracted, it'll shut itself off. There's a limit switch on the mechanical pusher plate. Until the platen is all the way back, the hydraulic ram is fully retracted, the plate shifter will not work. It's interlocked. We don't want it to run. You can, however, turn the sludge conveyor on. Once the pusher plate is all the way retracted, we call that the home position, and this light will come on. And the pump will stop. Now we want to run the plate shifter. We have to turn the plate shifter on. It activates the hydraulics. And before it can activate the pendant control, we have to also turn on the conveyor. So as the sludge falls, it doesn't build up, it'll be conveyed away to the end of the trailer. Now it's time to use the plate shifter. The control pendant is on this retractable swivel base. So I pull the cord out to where I'm going to be working and you can hear it ratcheting three clicks. When it hits those three clicks, you can stop and it'll hold its own place. Using the close button moves the carriage to the tail of the trailer. Using the open button moves the carriage to the tank or to the cab of the truck. Once you begin the plate shifting operation, the plate shifter carriage is all the way to the front of the trailer on the filter press. That position resets all of the tangs to grab the plates and frames. You can then grab each plate one by one, each frame one by one, until you've shifted each of the plates and frames throughout the entire filter press. Once all the plates and frames have been shifted, the carriage then has to go all the way to the end of the trailer to be reset by hitting the carriage against the backstop, resetting all of the tangs. There are three e-stops on, on the platform level of the filter press. There's one on this corner, and again, you push it to deactivate everything on the system. By turning it, it'll reactivate it. There's another one on this corner. And one at the tail. Again, turning it reactivates it. 
The plate shifter control pendant also has an e-stop. This e-stop controls only the conveyor. The hydraulics are still on, but the operator can stop this should something fall in that shouldn't be in there for whatever reason he needs to stop the conveyor. Once it's okay to turn it back on, turn and release. At the back end of the trailer, there's another e-stop button. This e-stop is the same as the e-stop on the handheld pendant for the plate shifter. It stops only the conveyor. The hydraulics are still running. When you want to turn it back on, turn and release. This is the filter press main feed pump. It's near the front of the trailer and it has a side port where you can feed solution to the filter press through this T, through this flexible joint, into the diaphragm pump, through this series of valves, all the way to the head of the filter press for filtration. Located at the left rear of the trailer is this ball valve for the airline needed to be open for the air blowdown. Once the filter press is full, this main feed inlet valve should be off then you can open this valve to allow air to come into the center feed, dual center feed system to push air through each of the cake chambers. The air will then return through the four corners pushing with it excess water. This is the main air inlet. It then tees off for the air blowdown as well as operation of both this diaphragm pump and then this removable hose goes to the auxiliary pump which can fill or drain this tank. This is the auxiliary pump mounted near the front of the trailer next to the tank. You can connect to the tank at ground level. You can then feed or drain from the bottom as well as the top. By flipping uh, the appropriate valves you can pump either way. When the filter press is at the job site and you're ready to dump sludge, the conveyor must be extended beyond the edge of the trailer and then locked into position. This is the locking pin that locks the conveyor in the re removed position so it can dump into a dumpster in this area here. When you're ready to transport the filter press system, the conveyor must be pushed back in under the filter press and locked in the position. These straps are permanently mounted to hold this tank in place. The tank always stays on the trailer, so even wh whether you're transporting or at the location, these straps stay in place. These straps, however, are removed once you're at location so that you can get the dumpsters down and use them at the tail of the trailer to collect your solids. Once you're finished at a particular job site, these handrails are removed and stowed on pegs between the filter press and the catwalk. The catwalk is then lifted with this lifting point so that you can pull these removable supports out. Once these supports are out, they're easily stowed in the cargo bin. The catwalk then swings down into place and is, is locked in place with these locking pins.